Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we are going to look at this fantastic little RC car. Now it's by a brand called Panda Hobby. That is a great logo. This is called the Tetra 18 by two, 18 X2, probably X2. And what it is, is a little tiny Ford Bronco. In fact, in the, some of the images I saw for this, I thought it was a, a Traxxas TRX4. And then I'm like, wait, that doesn't look quite right. Let's take a look at what we got here. I think it's 118 scale. Yes, it's 118 scale, four wheel drive. And it has quite a few cool little features over here. And I, I, I apologize, I hate dealing with boxes. Let's take a gander real quick. 2.4 gigahertz remote, absolutely disgusting second color option. What in the hell were they thinking? What is it, chicken custard? Oh God, it's horrible. Ooh, there's, oh, there's actually upgrades. There's actually upgrades for this. That's insane. Wheel blocks. What the hell is that wheel weight? This has oil fill shocks, which is really, really neat. I can't believe that. So water resistant and water, that's kind of weird. Water resistant, waterproof. Motor's waterproof, which technically motors are waterproof. And uh, there's an ESC combined receiver, which is great. Designed in California. Where are the Sherman Oaks? Wow, I gotta look up these people here. Okay, some basic information here. If you are interested in this, just go ahead and pause the video because I can't be bothered to wait any longer and I wanna open this thing up. So let's just do that real quick. Oh my God. So first problem I have here is that it's RTR. And I get it, the whole instant gratification thing is cool, but I don't know, I still like building my stuff. That's where I get a lot of enjoyment in the hobby. This thing looks fantastic. It really, really does. Snip. Some stickers. Full-size radio? You're kidding me. I was not expecting that. I thought it'd be a lot smaller. Now, don't get me wrong. A small radio is not a negative to me. I picked up a couple of these quite a while ago. One of my good friends from Tamiya Club, Jenny Mo, let me know that these were a thing and they're super basic, but look at this. It just sits right in your hand and when you're on a trail drive, it weighs nothing. I don't wanna to get too much into this because I love this remote, but uh, yeah, so this is, you know, full hobby grade and I, I run quite a few large cars with that and there's kind of the irony, but anyway, I digress. This is a very, very cheap feeling remote. Eight double, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Please don't tell me. No, it's not, I'm sorry. I thought it was one of those old school eight double A battery holders. This is very cheap. What we have here is off the shelf four cell double A battery holder attached to the radio. Now, fine, it's, it's, it's very cheap, it's off the shelf, but you know, if it works, it works. Let's open this up here, got, oh, that's right. So this has got, it says three channel and there's a little light symbol. And this is really cool. We'll talk about that when the car is running. Otherwise you've got the steering rate, steering trim for channel one, bind for the receiver and uh, probably indicator light and channel one reverse. How's this feel? That feels pretty good. Can I one hand it? Oh yeah, I can. I don't know why everybody seems to want to put the wheel all the way out here. Stuff it right there and you can just one hand it all day. What the heck is this? <laughs> okay. my, my first thought was, what the heck am I gonna do with the banner? But then, okay, yeah, I like this. Okay, I just, I just like the angry panda bear for some reason. Now I can't focus, oh, there it goes. Some tools in here. Probably a charger, yep. Actually, it comes with double A's, that's interesting. This is quite similar to the WPL D12 battery pack. Different connector, which I kind of, I prefer these JST connectors. Okay, batteries are in here. Here we've got the truck. Tiny little cotter pins. And we'll pull the body off. Wow, it was like one of mine. This is a very cool unit here. It's a, again, a combined ESC receiver and I like it. Power switch is in a weird place. Can I get to that with the body on? Yeah, I guess you can. What a dumb place to put the power switch. You see that right there? Batteries here at the rear. Ooh, look at this. Servo is axle mounted. That is very cool. So what this basically means is that 
as the car's suspension is being compressed and uncompressed, the steering geometry will not change because the servo is attached to the axle. If the servo was attached to the chassis, as you'd move the chassis up and down, the steering linkage, which would be attached to the servo, would push the wheels left and right. This is very common, a lot of four link setups, which is why people like to run a axle driven servo, but usually then you have clearance problems. In this case here, well, that's not a problem because there's a big hole there. So that, that's really cool. Tires, a bit stiff. You could have gone a little bit softer on those. The rims, I hate. Uh, the motor says 51 turn. I don't know precisely what motor this is in here. Single speed transmission. Frame rails are C-channel made out of a probably like a zinc plated metal. It's definitely steel. A lot of little tiny hardware here. Again, oil filled shocks, which they feel very nice. I like how the bumpers are bolted to the chassis. This is just like the TRX4. It's almost like someone just shrunk it down. Okay, let's put a battery in. It feels really small. Where does this plug in? This JST connector is really stiff. The, the, the wire is really, really stiff in this. Okay, I'll just plug that straight on in. Turn the radio on. And turn the car on. Actually, no, we're going to put the body on and then turn the car on. I'm just curious because I want to see if I can do this. Okay, well, I did it. It does have taillights, has headlights as well. Okay, body is pinned back on. I'm, it's very unlikely this is a licensed product. I didn't see any branding on the box. Maybe I missed it. A good way to spot that is the fact that there is no Ford branding on this anywhere. Not at the rear, not at the front. It's kind of cool. The body can rest in this little channel right here, which it's nice. What I like about this one here is that the wheels are all tucked in nicely. That's really cool. This particular example does look like the wheel is shoved back a little bit at the rear and back a little bit at the front. I did notice that the body mount holes appear to be in the wrong spot. You see the little depression right there? The thing is, the bumpers all fit properly. So... I don't know. The car seems to be turning to the left a little bit. So let's adjust the steering trim a tad. Oh my goodness. That's maxed it out already. Okay. Let us run through the control. So we have left and right steering. Servo seems to be responsive enough. Feels all pretty darn good to me. We have acceleration and reverse this is in the high setting if i can aim that over here see it's in high let's shove it into low and what i'm going to do is try and make the truck put as far back as i can take off as slowly as it possibly can okay that's that's pretty good That is full speed in low gear, which is good. Now I, I said low gear, there is no gear. It's just, here, take your batteries. And we'll put it in high. Again, throttle response is pretty good. So third channel apparently is the lights. So let's take a look here. We'll put this in, I don't know, the other position. How cool is that? Headlights look, you know, they're all right. They're a light, they're an LED inside of a bucket. So from the front, it looks like an LED in a bucket. This looks, I mean, I appreciate it be very clear about this. I appreciate this a lot. It looks terrible. Um, just realize this. What is going on with the mirrors? They should be in that, oh, I don't know, detent, perhaps? What is happening there? Okay, we'll have to fix that because that looks stupid. Windows are tinted, but not really. There is a sticker on the outside, and this isn't a horrible idea because it gives the illusion that you can see into the car. But honestly, if you did see into the car, all you'd be seeing are wires. So I, I don't mind that. That's that's not a bad idea. Sticker is, yeah, it's there. This chrome stripe is huge. 
But on the actual car, it would be bright dipped anodized molding. And on the Traxxas, it's a chrome plated plastic molding. Here it's not, here it's just a chrome sticker, but I gotta tell you, it does a very good job of making me forget that. Tail lights, they're clear, but the red LED makes them look acceptable. Uh, I think there's reverse lights. Oh, interesting. So the tail lights will always shut off under acceleration. I had assumed they would be on. Um, if you shut the lights off, the tail lights are still on, but they perform the same way. Whatever. You know, it, it's still cool that it has them. It's still cool that you can control the remotes. Is that, that's a little tiny, oh my God. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny little draw tight hitch with the tiniest little screw hole. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Please tell me there's an aftermarket trailer for this. So yeah, it's pretty good. Let's take a look underneath here. You've got a standard four link at the rear, standard four link at the front. This drive shaft looks bloody amazing look how beefy this thing is oh i shouldn't say is it certainly looks robust little o-ring there to prevent the roll pin from coming out the four links are yeah they're made of plastic but they're very very nice i don't know what's going on here with the angle but it's not really affecting anything there is no differential these are not portal axles just amazing that they can make stuff this small flexibility is very very good you know unfortunately from the bottom you can see inside the car bumpers are adjustable here so you can pull these in or out I wanted to note something I removed the body to change the mirrors and notice how here on the receiver there's channels three four five well those three are attached to the body and they came very thoughtfully with these little labels that's the plug that goes into the fourth port the green one in the fifth port and then the there you go this other yellow one in the third port i wanted to just point that out because that is very very thoughtful of them to do that this connector here has a little key on it, so you can't install it in the wrong orientation, but this one here is not keyed. Therefore, plug it in and match the location of the red and the black to the one, the number three, that has the little key. Okay, and the same, I think five is the same way. So the little tool bag has this really cool looking T-wrench, which I've never seen in this shiny chrome before. It also has these. These cover check it out <laughs> how cool is that look at that that is freaking awesome on something this small they actually went to that kind of trouble you've got some spacers here for the shock absorbers some more cotter pins this oh this is important let's figure out what that is all right so that little jumper will go on channel six if you bridge those two You'll either have a break, which it does right now, or you would shut that off. So presumably it would go straight into reverse. You know, I don't know much about this company, but this seems to be you know, a respectable little car. And I definitely want to stress little. It's not big. For example, this is a 118th scale car. I I'm actually not entirely believing that either. If you compare this to like a 118 scale die cast car, I would suspect that this should be much larger. We're probably talking about yay long. What we have here is probably something closer to 120th, but that's a dumb scale. No one knows what that is. 118th kind of stands out more. Here's a 116th scale WPL, and we can see a considerable size difference from the front as well as in profile. And you can see how much bigger the 1 16th scale WPL is. I, I wouldn't say that these two are competitors because we are talking about a car with a price point of $50 versus 150-ish, I think. So there's this is quite a bit more expensive. Comparing it to something a little bit more familiar, probably half as wide as a grasshopper. Ignoring the front bumper on the grasshopper, it is roughly two thirds the length of a grasshopper. So it, it's a small vehicle. So there is the Traxxas, and here, oh, there is the Tetra. I mean, this is massively larger. So if I zoom out a bit more, you can't see it, but the front of the two trucks right now are lined up, and the back bumper 
comes to halfway of the Bronco. So we're, what we're looking at really is whatever scale the Traxxas is, which they claim to be one tenth, most likely this little guy is really not one eighteenth. It's something a little bit smaller, like one twentieth. From the front, again, we're looking at half the width on the Tetra versus the Bronco. It's ground clearance. I would suspect that this thing probably behaves reasonably well outdoors. Now, I have no intention of ever getting this dirty because I specifically bought this to use indoors. But then what exactly will I drive it on? The good news is I have an idea. Let's go take a look at how this little guy runs. So this is my thought. This truck is, at least for me, I think a little bit on the small side to do much outdoor driving. This means I basically wanted to use this truck to do some indoor driving, as it were. My daughter and I whipped up this little Lego bridge, and let's see how well the truck behaves. We'll do this from a couple of angles, but we'll try and get up this rock face here. Well, I say rock face, this Duplo face. It's doing really, really well. Again, if I go full throttle, it'll just shoot over this. But I think the point here is to actually just creep our way across. There we go. We caught on, I think we're caught on some Duplo. There we go. This side's quite a bit harder because it, not only is it steeper than the other side, but there's a lot of quarter round Duplos here, so it's actually very slippery. Let's see how well it'll do. Ooh. Come on, you can do it. Oh dear. Whew, kind of a nail biter almost. <laughs> Come on, you can do a truck.
This truck, especially in the low speed, is so easy to drive indoors. I mean, it just, it just kind of, I mean, it's slow when you want it to be slow. It will happily drive over this, what I presume used to be a sheep. Driving it indoors also makes you get creative. So I got my son's little play space over here, which it happily goes into. Okay, up and down, very happily. I can make a 14 point turn in here. Okay, open that door, there we go. Now on the inside, this wall is, I don't want to say it's sheer, but it's quite, quite a bit more vertical. But check this thing out. He happily goes out. He can easily push this toy right on pony. I have to admit that this thing is a ball. Honestly, its scale realism is pretty good. Given the fact that we are talking about a small Lexan body, uh, the fact that the mirrors are for some reason put in the wrong space, but we can forgive all that because I'll move them later. And overall, I mean, you know, just, I mean, even look at the articulation. Here's a little bottle we got here. Will that work? It's a little bit too tall. We are talking about two inches of suspension travel here. That's quite remarkable. But the question is, do you want one? That, and that's that's kind of a hard one. If you're into scalers and find yourself stuck indoors in the winter, this is a pretty good option. You know, you got yourself some Duplo or Lincoln Logs or something like that. This could be a bit of fun. If you've got a Traxxas TRX4 and it, you think it needs a Mini-Me, that's a good idea as well. Now, the Bronco is not the only version of this. You've also got a Jeep and a couple others, I believe. They do seem to say that there's aftermarket parts. I really haven't noticed any i looked a little bit i thought the price point was a tad high initially but given the fact that this thing's got quite a few functions the fact that all the batteries are included the fact that it has oil filled shocks aluminum bodied oil filled shocks at that this may be a bit of a bargain so if you are interested be very good perhaps for christmas uh you'll get one in the stocking because the box won't fit but i think this will definitely fit in a stocking I hope you enjoyed this video. This is not normally something that I would look at, but I seem to have some sort of weird soft spot for this Vicel Bronco. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.